Hi, Ben. Are you well? I'm well, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Now you are being recorded, so. How's the gang? Yeah, yeah, they're all good. The, the newest members made it to th three weeks in 12 hours time, so it's supported a new human, so it's all good. Started to get into a routine? Uh, not a particularly pleasant one. Okay. <laughs> so there's a, there is a routine. Um, so yeah, I think uh, there was a little bit of false, false hope that um, he would sleep more than he does, but uh, he's, he's in a routine at least. Okay. So uh, yeah. if everyone understands what the expectation is from now on. I've been playing back some of the previous calls as I commute and... Um, one of the most powerful sections was the guys all explaining our parenting practices, but not in a way of saying yeah. this is the only way to do it, but just this is our experience and wishing you well in terms of it's all a unique experience, obviously, for every family. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's amazing how I think how it kind of runs to a timetable of, of sorts. Um, in, in its own special way for everyone. Okay. The, the, the developmental goals and things seem to be on this highly attuned timetable. So, uh, you know, it's uh, something to be experienced. Anything surprising so far? Really surprising? <laughs> Anything surprising? I, I'm genuinely in awe of how prepared new humans are for the world. Mm-hmm. Like they say that, um, that, you know, you obviously have to, that they, they, they can do nothing. They, they've got to feed them and got to sort of um, support them and do whatever. But they are, the amount of stuff they can do without sure. knowing or learning or whatever sure. before you even begin is amazing. That's my, my biggest eye opener so far. And they're totally dependent on the parents or carers, aren't they? So. Hi, Dave. How are you? Hi, I'm okay, thanks. You guys okay? We are. You are being recorded. So That's okay. Um, I thought we should probably make a start then. I haven't had any apologies from anybody, so the other two may actually join us shortly. Um, I'm conscious that we didn't do the dinner table university exercise last time. And in the briefing notes for today's call, I just thought it might be good to go back to that and have a conversation about our experience of the circle. Um, I'm conscious that, the, the, that there may be people watching that have never been in a circle, which is one reason for us doing this in the public, as, as it were. So I just wondered if either of you, we should introduce ourselves first. If you just want to say something about yourself and your work and your play and your exposure to circles historically and where you're up to with the circle now in terms of advocate, it's a challenge, etc. Dave, do you want to kick us off? Sorry, I lost everything then. Apologies. That's okay. <laughs> I was looking at a blank screen. Okay, Benny, you wanted to um, chip in? Oh, so, no, sorry. Mike Wallace, I am working at... Sorry, a bit of a delay there. Not very yeah. useful. So I'm Dave Wallace. I work for Queen Mary University of London. I'm a L and D and OD and every other D you can think of linked into development. Um, and my experience of the work in circles is it's been a very useful thing for me in so far as it's, it's almost given me those people to answer to in the pursuit of a goal. It's also been, it's made me a bit clearer in what I want to achieve. The difficulty comes in being able to commit to the circles each week and life happens. So that does affect your sure. ability to attend. But that's not a loss. It's um, everybody in the circle is supportive, so that helps. It was interesting to see a comment in Slack about if you were to do a next one, and I don't think you said you, that you wouldn't, but there was a bit of a, was a timing thing for you in terms of outside of work hours would be better? Yeah, um, there was an, an expectation that my calendar would go one way, and it didn't. It's completely changed. So 
it's probably easier to move my my circle commitments to outside of normal working hours yeah. and also reflecting the fact that there is an ebb and flow of work within the university so towards the end of the academic year is much easier than trying to do it now when we're just into a whole new academic year and the commitments are growing every week and that's uh, uh, and that's because all the teaching's over and it's exams is it is that the cycle yeah it's and it's quite strange because even though our role um as a central service means that we're not directly working with students um, we're not directly working with a lot of academics now that time, but it still affects the whole workflow and expectations sure. of what we can do here and is it your first circle and what's your goal for other, um, others this to... is my yeah uh, this is my first circle and my goal well part of my problem was i tried to identify too many goals but this time uh, going to stick with the one and my goal was to get into the habit of producing a blog okay and where are you up to um, i'm up to having done a few that i've shared with uh, an internal network just to get into the the pattern and the feeling of doing it that hopefully in the next couple of weeks i'll start throwing them out to the rest of humanity over the various social media tools and I'm not sure if you did anything with weak notes. Is it just worth explaining what a weak note is and if you use those? Yeah, I'm not going to stick directly to the pattern as identified within weak notes and also the David Allen stuff that you shared with me, which was really interesting to read through. Um, going to take more of a point of, okay, let's title each section of the week into rather than Monday through to Friday, which would be really boring to everyone is actually this subject area I was focusing on this week this subject area I was focusing on and what I learned what I did well what I didn't do so well so treating it as a reflective tool rather sure. than just writing hey isn't this an interesting subject sure is there anything else about the working of the circle that you've liked or not liked only from my own point of view in so much as actually find that time to commit to work through the work all at uh, sure. work all creating words now the circle sure. uh, pre-work okay uh, ben do you want to introduce yourself who you are where you are what you're up to and circle experiences so far sure uh so my name is ben elias uh i am uh, I guess you'd call it an entrepreneur uh, and I run a software as a service product in the enterprise social kind of space. Uh, this is my first working out loud circle as such. And uh, I guess working largely for myself, um, this is a tremendously valuable exercise in terms of um, surrounding myself with, with people who, um, not necessarily are in the same sort of um, life place or workplace, uh, but but having a, a, a sounding board of, of a variety of opinion to sort of um, bounce things off and, and get ideas and, and get feedback from um, through the structured kind of process, weekly process, I guess. Yeah. And your goal? Uh, my my goal is largely it's morphed a little bit but but largely to find a rhythm around um work and life and and the balance that that becomes uh so so mostly around work but but also incorporating other stuff as well uh and then to that end sort of you know uh working my way slowly at, at your suggestion through the designing your life uh book and uh yeah so so sort of making progress on that front uh but again it's always uh there's always more work to do and it's a little bit aspirational at all times i suppose uh, and there's another person that's in their first circle how has it been for you and what would you say to others that haven't been in a circle so far um i i think I, i've sort of um said, said this probably for a, a little while now that the structure and the program of working out loud is is probably a little bit of a misnomer as far as 
most people would understand it and probably I understood it before I did an actual circle, which is that working out loud is probably not just sharing whatever you do in a day-to-day basis and kind of hoping that people listen. Um, there's sort of little W-O-L and then there's capital W-O-L, which is this this sort of, um, you know, it's got things to do every week and, and you have things to discuss and um, it is a little bit more structured and guided through that that process. Sure. And do you think that's been helpful or do you think that people can work out loud easily and appropriately without having gone through a circle? Um, I, th- I think they're just very different terms. So uh, I think it's very helpful to have the structure and, and perhaps by the end of it, you're very good at the thing. Yep. Um, I think it's a, a little bit uh, disingenuous to jump in with the phrase and say you're doing it without having to ha- having done, um, I guess, the, the background reading or, or things like that. Okay. Uh, hi, Rita. Sorry, I'm late. Technology okay. issues. So we're recording and we're going public and all of that. So we've just been we've just been introducing ourselves, who we are, where we are, what we're up to, what we're doing, and experience of the circle so far. I should say we're in week ten of twelve for those that don't know anything about us. Wow. And you're just back from a jaunt, aren't you? Well, it wasn't a jaunt, it was very <laughs> serious work. So a bit about yourself and where you are and what you do. What you do. Uh, I'm Rita Zonius and uh, I am now the director of my own company uh, called the Enterprise Social Engineer. And uh, I'm looking to build a business focused on helping organisations who want to... Um, you know, be be the best uh, social organisations that they can be, uh, and really support them on the change and communication side of things, um, which is where I find uh, a lot of the challenges lie. Are uh, the people changes associated with helping people become more social? It's not about the technology. Um, and. Uh, uh, today, actually, I wrote a um, I wrote a little piece um, that I published on LinkedIn about my my trips, recent trips to uh, New York and London, and um, I, I didn't. It wasn't so much focused on the subject matter, but more about you know how great it was to go and start some new relationships and deepen some relationships with others. Uh, you know, such as me going to see you, Simon. You know. <laughs> It was amazing. Um, it was yeah, amazing so, that you. It was amazing that you did that, and it it was good to see you. Well, yeah, I don't know if you've read read uh, what I put on LinkedIn today yet. Uh, maybe you'll catch up on it. But um, you know, I do believe that working out loud and learning the skill and building the habit of working out loud underpins so many other things and enables so many other things to be achieved in your life. Um, and, you know, having a clear purpose around, around it, uh, you know, is really useful. So that was sort of the crux of the, the article and, uh, you know, and, and it is what I've enjoyed, um, you know, about the circle uh, so far. I was really, um, you know, helping us all learn uh, more about one another and what we're trying to do and, um, yeah, keeping us, keeping each other honest in being purposeful, you know, in the pursuit of our own objectives. Now, I know that you've been to Europe and New York before, and I just wondered, in the light of your career switch, whether there was anything surprising out of your trips, or it was all as you expected, or were there any surprises? Well, I was really going to test to you know, see whether there's a market for what it is I'm interested in helping other organisations with, and, you know, I, I think that there is, and no matter how far no matter how far we think we've come in helping um, organisations to become social or even looking at ourselves and, you know, seeing how far we are personally um, in working in a social way, in a visible way. um, I did have a number of conversations that just, you know, reminded me that there's still quite a long way to go and there are still a number of organisations out there uh, where the jury is still out on the usefulness of social or 
or that it's just simply too hard to do, sure. you know, because for various reasons. Uh, so that was of interest to me. The thing that I think is beginning to dawn on vendors, vendors of products, is that they now have finally realising that just going and talking to prospective customers about your product and the features that it has, you know, is not enough and doesn't go far enough. I think they're kind of appreciating now that um, there's a, a bridge that must be crossed, you know, um, for people from the business to come willingly you know, to use a technology that they're being given. It is quite interesting to me. And it was uh, not that different in London and New York. I, I felt that people were um, in a very similar, similar headspace, you know, on that front. Okay. And I know this is a personal question. Um, and where are you up to with your business and what are you doing next? So, so I know it's early days still, isn't it? Oh, well, now that I'm back, I did a very excellent uh, thought leadership intensive uh, course in New York, and um, which is helping me work out how I, you know, go from having kind of, I guess, thinking about what I believe should happen to, uh, you know, enabling, enabling um, what I want to happen in a commercial sense, if that makes, if sure. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that was exciting to me, but also I, I've had, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've already, I've had a number of approaches from um, prospective clients, which is exciting. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm flying the plane and building the plane at the same time. Sure. Uh, of course, I'm not going to, um, you know, turn away good opportunities to do some interesting work uh, and I'm building and building my business at the same time. So yeah, it's fun. I, I, I expect I'll probably be doing some work this side of Christmas, which I was not anticipating. So that's good. And it's worth your name checking the lady that you had the input from. Sorry. It's worth your name checking the person that you had the input from on the, on the training. Uh, oh, Gabby, uh, Gabrielle Dolan. Yeah. You mean? If people yeah. want to look on a website and see what you've been up to in terms yeah. of input and stuff. Mm. I know you've talked about pink sheets and green sheets, which I'll let people will Google mm. later in terms of intellectual <laughs> yes. property and what people know, etc. Um, and it's your first circle, Rita. So I just wonder if you say something about your experience and surprises as you expected, not as you expected, etc. Um, I can't say that I'm surprised, but then I think I've already come to this idea that this is a good idea, you know, quite some time ago. So I haven't felt that the experience has been confronting in any way or particularly personally, you know, hugely challenging. Sure. Um, I think though what it does highlight is there are so many ways to uh, be able to make contributions and, and work out loud. So I, I think I've enjoyed that. And I've also enjoyed, uh, getting to know the members of the circle a little bit more and we're all into uh, quite, you know, quite different things and have different goals and, you know, it's been interesting to learn more about that. So I've, in, I've enjoyed that. And as you know, Simon, you know, while I was away, I was um, singing the praises of working out loud circles to a few people who were really quite new to the whole concept yeah. and who then subsequently ran away to look at videos of, John Stepper doing his TED Talks, etc. Sure. And um, yeah, so I, I, I feel also too that my experience has enabled me to speak with a lot more authority about what it is like to participate in a working out loud circle. It would sure. be hard to recommend these things to others when you haven't experienced them yourself. Or even criticise them, which is something that I've commented right. on exactly. in some public posts recently. I agree. So yeah, I agree. I agree. And yeah, I agree. You need to have an informed opinion. The only way to have an informed opinion of it is to jump in and do it. So a bit about me. Uh, Simon Fogg in Bradford, West Yorkshire, in the UK. It's in the north of England. It merges in with Leeds. This is my second circle. Introduced to Working Out Loud by Michelle Ockers in Australia when she was at a conference and I was on the back channel just reading. Had an amazing interaction with her um, can't believe it's just over a year since I first heard about it with all the stuff that I've done on Working Out Loud since. Um, I did the first circle, recruited it online with four complete strangers. So that's amazing as well. You can just jump onto a call 
with four complete strangers and do a goal for 12 weeks and learn loads about each other and help each other with the goals. Decided to do a second circle. Did it in a similar way. Um, I knew Rita more than anybody else of any of the circles that I've done um, via ESM chat and also doing a life design conversation as part of reading Designing Your Life. Um, so I was keen to get a Rita on board and then I was happy to get the other the three on. Um, what I think I've learned this time round is I'm far clearer that when you start a circle, um, the first call is the end of the first week. So in the first circle, it was all chaotic as to whether the call was the start or the end. And there was a bit of chaos, but we finally sorted that out. And now the circle starts, we do the work, and then we have the call, and you get into a cycle like that, a bit like the rhythm that Ben was talking about earlier um, i'm already committed to doing a third one which is turning out to be a bit of a escapade and an adventure having access via facebook to their workplace stuff um, and doing all sorts of things there um, just to say that my goal was to read jane bozarth's show your work i set up a book club in slack for that a bit hacked off that there were about 14 or 15 people that joined that only one person seemed to read the book and past comments so i failed partially on the goal to actually work out loud with somebody um but i may say something about that later because something's already amazing happened for the next circle and for next year um yeah i just emphasize that this working with complete strangers is amazing and i don't know if you want to talk about if you were to do a circle and you were recruiting for it how would you do it what sort of people would you be after would you go for complete random strangers or would you get more specific? Do you think it matters? Personally, I don't. You're freezing, David. Sorry. The whole thing that this has proven is you guys, in general, seem to have a. Sorry, my oh. bandwidth is a little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit unfriendly, my bandwidth. Apologies. Yeah, you're okay I'll now. Let you guys carry on. Go on. Okay, ben? If you were to do um, another one, uh, etc. I, I think I've, I've been an aficionado probably throughout most of my working life of diversity of, of thought and experience and background and whatever else. So that, that kind of speaks to the people I would try and surround myself with in, in any kind of circle. Um, I, I think that in my experience of, of this circle, it would actually be quite strange to have... Um, you know, a, a very aligned goal uh, yeah. within a team or, or something like that uh, or within the same organisation in a very similar function, uh, that, that would be a bit strange just because it, that overlaps into, um, I, I guess, actually doing the work as against having a, a conversation about working out loud. Um, and, yeah, I, I think that the diversity aspect to it, you know, you can see with the time zones that we're trying to get across and things like that. Um, it makes for some interesting conversations. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think th this circle has been great in that regard. Okay. Rita? Um, can you remind me of the question? I thought I'd answered it before. Remind if me you, the question again. If you were to if, do oh, another, we had to, uh, who okay. would you recruit? How would you recruit? Would you look for complete random strangers? Would you target specific individuals? No, I'm a little bit like Ben too. I think... You know, you want to, I mean, firstly, you obviously want to have people who are, you know, genuinely interested and who want to, you know, participate. Um, and, and then, yeah, I'm not, so, I'm not so concerned about wanting to have a group of people around me who want to talk about the same subject matter. I don't think that's, you know, that's, um, that's of huge importance to me. Uh, and I would probably recruit them via Twitter, Simon. You know, okay, no, very good. It's very natural for me. Sure. Um, I just wanted to pick up the timing thing that Dave mentioned. So in the first circle, I was pretty... I'll start again. Um, if you're doing a global circle, time zones are a nightmare and the clock changes differently around the world. Seasonally is also a challenge. So in the first circle, I did a spreadsheet split for 48 half-hour slots by seven. Asked people to fill it in for green, I'm totally available. Amber, I could be available, but it's not ideal. Red, I can't do that because I'm sleeping or whatever else the story is. Um, and I just found that it was amazing when people are available. 
so you know i know that rita gets up at stupid o'clock to do some things for example so you know <laughs> if you assume when people are available there's a bit of a you know you shouldn't assume and just ask people um but i managed in the first circle to get a time which was really convenient to, to me and that was fine the, uh, the second one because i was keen to get the four of you um I, I basically rolled over and i'm having to do this in work time and working longer elsewhere um but the third circle which i'm doing I've effectively said a, a time period and because of the nature of that particular circle because it's more than five and it's on Facebook and workplace etc um, I don't know how that's going to pan out I'm going to do the same thing and say when are you free when would you like to do it but I can see there being almost sub circles in in certain parts of the world because I'm pretty adamant this time I'm going to do it at a time which is convenient to, to me um, so that I can make sure it runs etc um, okay just wondered if we wanted to talk about the habit checklist which was one of the exercises this week and as a reminder um, I, th I think that John got this partly from the book Coach Yourself by Anthony Grant and Jane Green which was about sort of like a number of tasks and just saying how much of this is habitual and what you're doing to make it a habit so the things like take small steps towards your goals set some realistic goals structure your life to attain your goals chart your progress there was something about celebrating success, I think, to remember. Um, anybody want to talk about any of that? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll go first. Um, I, I'm generally a little bit terrible at a lot of this stuff. Um, the things that I've found work for me are, in effect, a combination of of these things so um, particularly um, chunking things down and sort of very um, time limited goals so uh, very specific tasks that I want to achieve in the next sort of two to three hours that kind of thing um, generally helps uh, maintain habits and things like that um, what what I have noticed in, in, in a, a very um, uh, relevant observation to my life at the moment but uh, so there's now these apps for small children in terms of when they feed and when they wake up and when they sleep and all this kind of stuff and um, you see it in a hospital context for, for starters which is that you get a sheet and you get a chart and they measure your temperature and they do whatever and um, that kind of stuff it, it looks completely mundane when they do it but then you end up with sort of two weeks worth of data and um, for, for the data conscious and the data fiends among us, it's, it's an absolute treasure trove of, um, you know, trying to track and, and do predictive analytics on <laughs> a bunch of things. I think we um, call it, I think we call it big data now, don't we? Sort of on a baby's <laughs> behaviour. Good luck with that. Yeah. But, um, but just, just the, um, you know, like the, there, are, the, there are now apps, right, that, that sure. are presumably not around in my childhood um, for, for parents to monitor every last detail of, of um, effectively habits. Um, and um, I think part of that goes to effectively recording in the same place every time. So, um, you know, you've got the hospital chart and that morphs into an app at some point. But that, that is the single source of truth for um, recording all the habitual things in life um so yeah it's it's amazing to see that happen and um i suppose what i have been missing um and if anyone's got any ideas i've, I've used a bunch of tools over the years to try and i would call it be a bit like a poster board or a you know post-it notes or, or um evernote or um calendar reminders and, and a bunch of other things along the way um none of them have really stuck with me to, to any great extent um, I, have, I haven't had the go-to tool for this is where I record um, all the things I need to on my to-do list or, or um, there's never a huge amount of habit that, that attaches to any one system. It's always sort of um, diversified. So that, that's maybe where I'm falling down. But um, if anyone has any advice, I'm happy to listen to it. It's not particularly advice. Although, you know, uh, but no, in, go on, sorry, Rita. Yeah. Defense, ben. I was just saying you're a defence, Ben. There are so many new things, as you said, you know, with the baby apps, I mean, there are so many new tools and new things to try that, um, you know, sometimes you do just have to try a few different things to see 
you know, what works. So I don't think it's too, you know, trying new things or not sticking to one thing for quite a while is okay. I think it's okay. I think today it's probably a lot more acceptable than it has been. I mean, this is why you're entertaining using, uh, you know, you're going to use Facebook next time, Simon, for the working out loud circle. So, sure. you know, it's, it's okay to experiment and see what works. I can think of one tool that I'm not necessarily recommending, but just as an example, I think it's called Wonderlist. And you put the task down, or it's like a list of things with a box, and you can tick them. But there's like a reinforcement thing. Because if you've got the sound on, every time you, you click and say it's done, or, or you've seen it, or you've watched it, or you've done whatever it is, there's a click sound. And then there's an extra loud click when they're all gone off the list. And that's particularly helpful on shopping lists when you're running around a supermarket and you've got like specific things to get. Every time you just tick it off, you don't have to scroll it off. It just ticks it and it removes it from the list. So it's, it's almost like a gamification to the max while you're shopping, you know. Hmm. Um, uh, hi, Madhu. How are you? Hi. Sorry, I got turned up in a meeting. That's okay. Just to say that we're recording and we might be using all of this. So you need to, to go steady and not be too provocative. <laughs> Um, we've just been introducing ourselves, saying who we are, where we are in the world, what we're, what we're up to, and our circle experience. Okay. Just so over that? to you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I'm uh, based out of Sri Lanka, um, you know, right beneath India, in Asia. Um, so, Work Out Loud, this is our... Uh, Eighth week, ninth week. It's ten, unbelievable. Oh my god, it's been ten weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope it wasn't I hard. Been... Hope, hope it wasn't hard work, Madhu. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's been it's been exciting. I think uh, for me, uh, the fact that we have a group of people coming together and and then we're thinking about it. Right? And, and then, a little bit of holding you kind of a... That's not me. No, it's okay, you keep going. <laughs> is it worth you saying what your role is and, uh, and something about your organization? Yeah, so um, I work for a company called Vitusa. It's a global IT services company. You know, we operate um, around the world. Um, 20,000 people. So we've been trying to drive work out loud in the company you know, right now in, in different, different ways. And, uh, but for me, I think, um, you know, this experience of doing the circle uh, has been particularly exciting because uh, we had a very diverse group of people with very, very different, very interesting perspectives about what it is. And, and for me, the fact that you're going to come every week and have a chat with uh, and tell people about what we do, you know, we want to go back and during the week do something so that I can come and talk about it. And, sure. Uh, so that I think that's really what I what I got out mostly out of the circle. You know, being able to be at it for ten weeks now, uh, I think it's it's a great a great support system. Okay, and I just wanted to say that. Um, it's not been all five of us every week. And just to say that on, on the two occasions, I think, when it's been one-to-one -one with myself and Madhu, have I done a one-to-one -one with you, Ben? Uh, yeah, I think we had one yeah. week. And then I think I did a one-to-one -one with Dave. So just to say that whilst, it, whilst it's good to have everybody on a call, I'm not saying it's better to, in, in the one-to-one, but it was just really interesting being able to deep dive with one other person <laughs> on the goals. Um, and Madhu, it's been really interesting talking to you as a CIO of a global company. And it's like, I wouldn't have had that opportunity in any other context to speak to somebody like you an hour a week, you know, after 12 weeks. Um, and I, I think that your goal's really appropriate. I know it's personal to you and your organization, but just to say, fundamentally, your goal was about deepening relationships across the organization, wasn't it? Which is precisely the theme of Working Out Loud Week. Um, it's also worth you saying something about You've done circles in your organization, but is this the first one you've done personally with other people outside, outside the organization? Yeah. Outside of the organization, yes. First, inside the company, you know, you try 
outside the company, yes. This is my first uh, outside the company circle. Okay. And what are you likely to do next? Are you likely to do another circle personally outside the organization? Or is it more about internal organization development? I think, um, so we've, we've had lots of chats around how do you really make this more mainstream and, uh, you know, I, and I think when we look at the skills that is required to work in our kind of setup, uh, you know, you're looking at two things, you know, one uh, new type of work skills, which is work out loud and design thinking and that kind of focus area. And from a leadership perspective, we're looking at things like social leadership uh, type of approaches. So these are kind of broad skill set that we want to, in the company on a broad base. Uh, work out loud is something that we will take up uh, as a mainstream practice. Okay. Uh, trying to mainstream everybody in the company gradually. Sure. Now, the first half of the call is about to end. So I just want to say to people that are watching that we're using a free copy of Zoom. And that if you use a free copy of Zoom, the call runs out at half an hour if it's more than two people. And I'll let the others. Uh, say otherwise but it's not like a massive issue having to stop the call and restart it so that's worked pretty well and it's also a bit of like a natural break so for this if we stop the call now and i'll send another email invite out shortly if that's okay, okay. See you thank you yeah. cheers just remember to press record which is a bonus <laughs> uh, well done yeah. it, it is devastating when you forget to actually record especially when there's people not on the call um, apologies, but it just seems like my uh, Wi-Fi and bandwidth here in, I'm in the furthest room away from everybody else in the building, and it just seems to be jumping in and out and all over the place today. So apologies for that. Okay. You're okay at the moment. Um, I just wanted to pick, on, pick up on something that Ben said about working out loud versus working out loud circles or the difference and stuff. So I've got a bit of a personal view on this, which says... You can obviously work out loud having never been in a circle because you can read the Austin Cleon book that I've not read yet, or you can read the Jane Bozarth book, which I have read as part of the circle goal. And you can work out loud with no reference to a circle whatsoever. Um, and for me, having been twice around the block now, um, I think that a circle gives you all sorts of other practices around working out loud it's it's a deeper and a richer experience because you're doing it with other people rather than on your own um so i think it is eminently possible to be amazing at working out loud equally it's, it, you can be amazing at doing a circle with other people um i think i might say that do i work out loud as much as i ought to or could do answer no but i'm getting better at that but i think that a circle certainly encourages you to you produce some output and if you're happy to share the output, why don't you share the output? I'm also conscious that there's people that are working on enterprise social networks, so you can actually work out loud perhaps more safely in the sense that it's inside the organization, although I know that some organizations have got culture issues where that, even that's an issue. Um, all the stuff that I do, because we don't use an enterprise social network at work, it's, it's all effectively public or it's in the working out our Facebook group. So there's a bit of... Uh, privacy but i've got a natural the tendency to share things widely which is why i hate MOOCs that have got forums that are behind authentication and stuff um and i just wanted to say something about will i ever stop doing circles who can say but there's a bit of a i'm still not in the swing of if you were to say to me don't be in a circle and what are the exercises and what would you do to work out loud i'm not in the <laughs> if you were to put me in a chair and do me a QA and a and tell you what are all the exercises that we need to do in a circle. I wouldn't be able to list them out. So it's still a novelty as I get to learn what the method is, what the, what the thing is. And I would also say um, that on the face of it, some of these exercises might look to be really trivial, really basic. I, I, I won't say childish, but there's a bit of a, just the mechanics of it is part of a habit former. I know we'll talk about habits just before we do join the call. Um, but I'm still in the swing of trying to get these habits ingrained, you know. Um, anybody want to respond to any of that to, to confirm or challenge or uh, anything at all about wall and wall circles? It is interesting that some of the tasks, like you said, you look at them initially and go, really, you want me to do that? 
okay, I'll, I'll do it. And then afterwards you look back at it and think, no, do you know what? That was really useful. I've got it down on paper. I oh, got it down on the screen. I can see it. And actually that helps me plan for moving a bit more forward. So yeah, I agree that, that initially they look a little bit trivial, but no, they're all useful. And I think we all did the 50 tasks, didn't, uh, not the 50 tasks, the 50 facts. I think we all did 50 fa facts. And it was just um, amazing. I still oh, haven't. Oh, sorry. But just to say then, they're just reading the other three's 50 facts, which is an amazing insight into you guys. You know, it was just astounding what you've been up to, where you've been, what you've done, you know, all the family stuff. You know, uh, and it's a challenge writing 50 things. Um, but there was loads of information in there. So again, I wouldn't underestimate that. Are there any, sorry, anything else about wall-on-wall -wall circles? I, I think um, part of the, the intriguing part to me being in the first circle is what I didn't do is skip ahead to week 10 yep. and decide on a goal that was suitable for all the exercises I had to do in future. Which maybe okay. if I was at university, I would have you know, skipped ahead and... Um, tried to see what was in the exam at the end. Um, but I think perhaps if you're doing it the second time around and, and Simon interested to hear what your thoughts are, I guess you have a little bit of an appreciation for the exercise you have to do in the context of the goal. Um, and I guess the goals become more fluid because of perhaps the first circle and then you're trying to do the exercises and refine the goal and things like that along the way, rather than choose a goal that is... Sure, sure the exercises and work backwards but that's almost like learning the syllabus for the exam rather than for the life change if that makes sense you, you know there are ways of teaching when you can just slump the teaching so people get high marks in exams or you can go off piece like i do on a regular basis and learn all sorts of other amazing things that you wouldn't have done if you hadn't um what i would also say if john's listening which he probably will be ultimately is he changes the he changes and refreshes the guides so one one result of that and i would say that it's an advantage is that it'll stop you getting in a rut you know so that if the guides change and the exercises change and the car actually changes over time um then that keeps everybody on the toes so that's almost like a reason for doing that in its own right um but i would say if the guides were to stay static i would have to do several i would have to do several circles before i got into the swing of i, I know exactly what's coming next but what i would also so what you've also reminded me that book that I recommended that you, that you are reading, which is A Design in Your Life, that makes no reference at the start, as far as I remember, to doing it as part of a group. But towards the end of the book, it starts saying, when you start doing your Odyssey plans, which I'll let people look up later, um, it, active, it actively encourages you to get close friends around you, family around you, because as you sort out what your life view and what your work view is, it's not just you, it's other members of the family and your friends that can actually chip in. Now, that's not like a circle necessarily, because that's just almost validating what you've said and is it correct. But there's a bit of a, I've still got this, this thing in my mind that if somebody was to ever merge the designing your life exercises with the circle guides, that would be amazingly powerful if the people in the circle were trying to do a life plan, work plan, what I want to do next. Um, and I reckon that'd be really powerful to put it mildly. You know, when I read that book in the summer, it was almost like a circle. We did it in Slack. We did it in Zoom. People brought the exercises in. And again, that was another amazing experience. A anybody else about Wallen and circles? I, I would uh, want to add to what uh, Ben was talking about. I think the goal is very key. And, I, you know, in the previous circles, I've been on the right goal, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, goal that doesn't require a lot of people involvement or you don't want to tap into your network, then it becomes tough to do some of the practices. And, uh, sure. It makes a big difference. Okay. Anything on wall and wall circles, Rita? Oh, I'd agree with that. And I, I'd agree with what Maju was saying. And, you know, I'd liken it to, uh, if we think about an enterprise social network, you know, the communities that do well are where people are mobilising around something common. And, you know, here it's learning the habit of working out loud and doing it 
you know, in a, in a powerful way. And when you don't have a goal and you're just sort of drifting a bit, then it makes it really, really hard um, to, uh, to actually get anything done. Um, you know, it's not dissimilar. Yeah. I think about my experience of helping the organization that I worked for before come to groups with being social and, um, yeah, having a, a clear purpose is, is key. I think that's what makes the conversation so interesting because then we've each got a, a, a clear goal in mind. And this is reminding I, me, go, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah. And I was going to say, and look, you know, honestly, you know, now I, I really, I really, I'm glad I've done the circle, you know, we're nearly there. I'm really pleased to have participated in it because I do think um, it is a good experience and yeah, one, one, one can only have an informed opinion about it um, through participation. So it was really nice to be able to be, uh, you know, talking about this stuff in um, New York and in London with people who really knew very little about it, who didn't even know what working out loud was, you know, in many instances. So, uh, you know, it was, it was great to be able to be an advocate for it um, you know, in a real, you know, in a real way that it wasn't just lip service, but they were actually in and participating. So it was good. And hopefully I found you a few more uh, recruits, Simon. No, very good. Um, have we all heard that phrase elevator pitch? Yes. Yeah. So this is effectively you bump into somebody significant in your organization or a customer, um, and you've got a couple of minutes to pitch. What would you say for wall circles in that circumstance? So there's two minutes to pitch wall circles, go. Hmm. I think. Well, if I jump in with mine, um, I've started using the goal criteria. So I just say, have you got a... If you've got a goal in mind that you'd be really passionate about, is there something that, you know, you can't do that on your own, but you need other people? And is that something that you can make progress in in 12 weeks? Um, and is it, a, is it a development goal? And it's amazing the conversations that just that, that sparks off. So there's a bit of a... I remember doing a comment on a blog post of Suk Pabial. Is that how you say it, Dave? Is that how you say his name? Suk and Pabial? Suk Pabial. So he chaired John and Harold Jarch, that's how you say those, um, at, at Learning Technologies in London. And he did a blog post, but he left it almost unanswered as to what he was doing next. And this was part of my circle one goal, to be far more assertive in my writing. And I basically I did a comment to his blog post, which basically said, I believe that every professional of any sort should do a wall circle just to, just to experience it. And everybody's got a goal or everybody could have a goal. And why would you do that on your own when you could do it with four other people? <laughs> a bit like Ben's account. I think it's Ben and the Dave that have talked about accountability and other people actually, you know, cheering you on. Um, but I just find that a really helpful way in. Anybody got other suggestions for pitches? Because we're often in that position, I think. I'll be honest, that to me sits <laughs> as, a, as a good way in, actually. It's just saying it's about the individual. It's about what they want. It's worth mentioning, because I do coaching and coaching supervision, I've actually used a few of these exercises in coaching sessions uh, because I've got a couple of people who are looking at network building and look at how they can engage with others. And I think some of these exercises are really useful for them to help them do that. And the way that I've sort of sold the exercises to them is this is a supportive process for identifying whether you're working at the right development. This has helped me identify, am I even going the right way with this? Am I doing the right thing? Never mind, will I achieve it? It's, is it the right one? Okay. Anybody else on pitches? <clears throat> it's not a creeping death, by the way. I'm not going to ask everybody. <laughs> Unless you really but, want so to. So I think it, it is about, and, and just to make the distinction between personal and professional goals, so it can be one of those two. Um, and it's about getting help from other people for something which is not 
immediately obvious the work that you're doing. So it's not about getting help for completing a task. It's, it's about that sort of taking a step back and, and looking what you want to get out of work or out of life or, or something like that. Um, and a guided process and a, and a well thought through guided process for um, letting other people help you with that. I had an amazing interchange with a lady in Canada over the weekend on Twitter DMs. I'm still recruiting for this, for this third circle. And her is, I've been chipping away for a bit. Um, but th this one, um, she was basically saying, but I'm in transition. I'm looking for a role somewhere else. So I don't have any current projects to talk about in the circle. This is somebody who's new to circles. And I'm saying it doesn't need to be current. <laughs> you know, we all bring our collective experience to the table. And it can be years ago, it can be, you know, yesterday. Um, but there was almost a, a, a perception in her mind that working out loud had to be exclusively work related. So, you know, there are other, other goals that can be in your personal life, um, which are actually highly relevant and arguably would bring, you know, m more power to the circle because it's not just about work the whole time, you know. Um, I'm still chipping away, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be successful, but we'll see. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll, I'll say something. So, um, for me, um, you know, going away to London and New York was, was fantastic. And in particular, uh, experiencing that sort of intensive thought leadership program from Gab Dolan was very exciting and it will very quickly help me to work out, um, you know, how I take what I know and, and kind of commercialise it uh, and do it quite quickly. So I was really excited. I, I, I always knew that that would probably be the struggle for me coming out of a corporate was to work out, okay, well, you know a lot of stuff and you don't, you know, you know you're being paid a salary, you know, you don't have to kind of worry about where the money's coming from, but it's a very different thing when you're outside and you've got to work out how you're going to kind of feed yourself and, and make some money. So... Um, I, w I was very excited about, uh, you know, doing that, that thought leadership course because coupled with then all of the conversations that I had with people over a number of weeks, um, you know, I feel like I've got, I feel like I've returned. I returned yesterday and I feel like I've got, you know, all of the sort of, all the uh, information that I need to be able to now, um, you know, really get up, get going and, you know, start start on the business plan and uh, I think the business plan at the end of the day is going to be fairly basic. I think I can move ahead, um, you know, quite quickly and it doesn't have to be a kind of war and peace effort, you know, to pull that together. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot better about things uh, having had the experiences that I've had over the last sort of six weeks or so. Sure. Um, yeah. I'm really pleased. I, it sort of seemed a little bit insane at the start. Like, let's just go off and go and meet a bunch of people and see what happens. But um, I think it was an excellent experience. And now I've got to start planning uh, another trip I'm going to make in February. Where are you off to this time? Well, um, we're going skiing in Canada at the okay, end of I, January. I, I remember, <laughs> so, but yeah. I've, I remember. Uh, but I've, uh, I've only bought the one-way ticket so far to Vancouver. Sure. So I've just got to work out how I'm going to return from there. <laughs> sure. Anybody else want to say anything? Um, just, I can't deliberately attribute to this to the to the the circle group, but one of the decisions I've made recently, this is added to it, and this okay. is and we've we've talked very loosely about this previously, but um, there's been a change in how I see me moving forward. Very good. If I hadn't. Have had yeah, and if I hadn't had these discussions, you know, especially our one-to-one -one with the week and some of the around this group, uh, around the, sorry, it's okay. totally on an ambulance route here. Um, yeah. Some of those discussions I've fed into it. So no, very good. It's pushing me forward with a different, different outlook. Super. Ben, Madhu, anything about where you're up to? Goals, joys, challenges? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I think goals has been fairly 
incorporate, but I, I think outside of the goals, um, I felt really coming together um, and having the support of people, you know, completely, you know, living the values of generosity and sure. a lot of the I've been able to get out of this team and all of you guys has been tremendous and, you know, really open uh, my thought process around, you know, how how generous people can be and how generous you should be. And, and I think, you know, I'm really thankful to all of you guys for, you know, the last 10 weeks of for learning and sharing. And I still find it amazing that you went to university in London and that your daughter's at a university, which is less than... 15 miles from where I was brought up and <laughs> stuff. It's like amazing coincidences. Uh, ben, anything? Oh, you're on mute. Yeah. Sorry, that was my version of um, I'm on a bus route and oh, very good. be collectively good about this. Um, uh, so my, my goal sort of um, been a bit fluid. The, the monumental life changes um, yeah. come at Sort of still surviving i think um in a way a lot of the weekly exercises have relevance to the week strangely yeah. enough in a in an odd sort of way or, or i make them fit to my experiences of that week i was impressed um, with your ch i was impressed with your chart comment with the babies and eating and stuff that was really that that was really good <laughs> earlier um so so yeah so you know that, that that's not part of the goal itself but um stuff like that sort of is, sure. is relevant and resonates um and yeah so so it's just sort of um yeah that, that's been really helpful to to practice the relevance of that okay and i'll have a second attempt so i got really hacked off with my goal because i read the book nobody was going to do anything with me um i've now started doing this or the prep for the third circle setting up workplace recruiting people and i've been sh i've been working out loud my thought process and it's <laughs> For some people, it might look blindingly obvious, which is fine, but it's been good sharing all that. I've had no feedback yet, which is also fine. Um, but just like an amazing, I'm reminded of Michelle, who specifically asked me, would you show me what you've been doing on Degreed? And that was late last year. And that was the first time that I've been on a conference call explaining anything ever, basically. So that was the start of me being okay doing this, for example. Um, but I had an exchange with somebody that I didn't know that well at all. Um, and she just posted something about World Values Day, like a summary of which countries have been involved, how many people have put their value in a picture. And I just asked her, I said, so what was your, what was your value and what was your picture? And she sent me that, reminded me that I did one word for the year. Did, this year there's a book called One Word. I sent her a blog post and she just came back instantly and said, I can't believe you sent me this. It's really interesting and I'm going to do one for 2018 and my word's going to be focus probably um i must have replied and saying that's great or something not innocuous but just a polite thing and then she said do you want to co-create a blog next year <laughs> and it's like i didn't ask that i wanted to do something with somebody else and the enthusiasm from that lady it's fiona michaud because i'm into name checking people as part of the stories um and she works for Bosch, which is one of the eight German companies renowned for community management. And, you know, who can say what's going to happen, you know, working on a word with her. Um, and that also forced me down the route of workplace by Facebook. I set up as completely open for whoever was a user. But because we're now doing that with Fiona, I want to keep them separate. Not because I've got an issue, but other people might have an issue. And had to redo the entire design of the security and the groups that I set up, which is fine. And then I'm thinking, well, if I'm hosting a circle on here, I might be able to host more than one circle. That's not me on a power trip. It's just a, well, let's see if anybody wants a platform and do no admin whatsoever and just use it. Because I'm really into reducing the barriers to entry of anything the whole time. And I'm not really into the administration. I'm really into the work and the learning, <laughs> you know, but if that helps other people. So I'm sure I'll be working out loud about that. Fiona's already said she's going to be using LinkedIn for her blog post on focus. And I should also say, as you know, I've got a multiplicity of goals and my issue is a complete lack of uh, focus. So the fact that she's doing focus, you know, uh, I'm hoping some of that will rub off on me, basically, <laughs> because it needs to. <laughs> um, 
Anything else before we close? On the circle. So um, I just want to say that we've, you've all been a good sports doing this for one week. Um, I'll publish that. If I stop the recording now, but if we stay on. Um,